today, you're connected more than ever. Your friends, your family, your life. Having a partner that understands banking is what you do on your time, anywhere you like. It's about being connected. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Daily Journal News Break, sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi, and welcome into News Break for this Thursday, August the 25th. I'm your host, Brad Locke. Thanks for tuning in to this uh, short news update, which you can find uh, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. at djournal.com, or on our Facebook page, or on our YouTube channel. Let's start things off by looking at the weather, brought to you by Weather Underground. Today's forecast, we're going to have partly cloudy skies, a high of 95 degrees. We're going to see a low of around 75. We do have a 20% chance of rain. The three day outlook. Uh, what, what's it going to look like going into the weekend? Well, it's going to be wet Friday, 60% chance of thunderstorms, a high of 93, low of 74. Going to stay hot as we get into Saturday, partly cloudy that day with a high of 96, a low of 74, 20% chance of rain. Sunday calling for clear skies with a high of 94 and a low of 74, but also calling for a 20% chance of rain because it's August in Mississippi. It's, there's always a chance of rain. All right, let's take a look now at the top headlines from the Daily Journal and djournal.com. ACT scores have risen statewide and locally this year. Six Northeast Mississippi school districts rank among the top 25 scoring districts in the state on the test taken by all high school juniors. Four of those local districts have average composite scores of 20 or higher. Amory, Corinth, and Inawama County with 20, and Oxford with 22.1. The Mississippi Department of Education released the results last week from the ACT administered during the 2015-16 school year. The Lee County School District's composite score was 18.9, an increase from 17.7 last year. The Tupelo Public School District, which has one high school, has an overall composite score of 19.1, up from 18.8 the previous year. According to the Mississippi Department of Education, the percentage of students meeting the benchmark scores in all four tested subjects, that's English, Math, Reading, and Science, increased from 9% in 2014-15 to 11% in 2015-16. And Mississippi Junior saw their average composite scores increase in all four of those subjects from 17.6 to 18.3. The ACT is a test designed to measure college readiness based on the skills high school teachers teach and what instructors of entry-level college courses expect. It was a record-setting year of fundraising at Northeast Mississippi Community College. The school's development foundation raised more than $1.2 million for the college and its students. During its recent retreat, the Foundation's Board of Directors presented Northeast President Ricky Ford with a check for $1,253,000. The money was dispersed through awards and grants already having been allocated and spent on various projects and needs. The funds were directed to several different areas, $292,000 in capital improvement and equipment, $286,000 in program support, $220,000 in athletics and fine arts, and 455,000 in scholarships. The annual giving number isn't inclusive of all the foundation's fundraising. The foundation raises money separate from its annual giving that gets put toward other projects and endowments. The foundation has around 1,300 active donors per year and their contributions help make up for low funding from the state. Lee County officials expect to see a slight rise in revenue for the 2016-17 fiscal year. County supervisors are currently working on a new budget. Increases in the assessed value of property in Lee County is what's expected to drive up revenues for the fiscal year, which begins October 1st. County Administrator Sean Thompson, who's back in the mix after a stroke sidelined him last year, said departments are still sending in their request. He said more information needs to be gathered before he can determine what spending levels might look like during the coming fiscal year. But property taxes are projected to bring in about $13 million in revenue for 2016-17. That's an increase over the current fiscal year's projected property tax revenue of $12.6 million. Property taxes represent by far the largest single source of revenue for Lee County. The remaining half of revenue comes from a variety of sources, including the state, federal government, local grants, fines and fees, and service charges. And in sports, Tupelo's defensive coordinator is very happy with his troops after Friday's season opener. The Golden Wave defense held Clarksdale in check in a 20-6 win, limiting the Wildcats to 210 total yards. Defensive coordinator Brian Jones praised his unit for being unselfish and playing true team defense. That team effort was made up of several solid individual showings. One of those was junior outside linebacker Peter Gray, who transferred from Texas this year. Gray recorded five tackles, one sack, five quarterback hurries, intercepted a pass, and forced a fumble 
which led to Tupelo's game-clinching touchdown in the fourth quarter. Gray played defensive end last season at Class 6A Friendswood in Texas. Also having a good game for Tupelo on Friday were linebackers Jet Johnson and Diesel Howell, who combined for 15 tackles, along with defensive lineman Kerry McKenzie, McKenzie Richardson, and Trey Rogers, plus free safety Tavario Standifer. Tupelo is back in action this Friday when it hosts Corinth. That's it for today's news break. I want to remind y'all to check out some of the podcasts that we produce here at the Journal. We've got the Memo, which is every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday with myself and W. Derek Russell. Had a new episode drop Wednesday afternoon with Lauren Wood guest co-hosting. Derek should be back today. We'll have another episode dropping this afternoon. You can listen to it for free in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at memo.djournal.com. Also, we have a high school sports podcast every Wednesday, so we've got a new episode of that that just uh, dropped yesterday with myself and Blake Morgan. Listen to that for free in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at preprally.djournal.com. And coming today, a new episode of Double Coverage, the Ole Miss and Mississippi State sports podcast with Parrish Alford and Logan Lowry. Listen to that for free in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at doublecoverage.djournal.com. And all the stories I've talked about today can be found in your daily journal or at djournal.com. Follow us on Twitter at djournalnow and give our Facebook page a like. That's it for today. We will be back on Friday. Have a good one.